Have you ever seen this person before? Look at him. So, well, I traveled through South America and discovered Chile and Argentina. And at the end of the world, in Fireland, in Ushuaia, I met him, Gunnar from Norway. We met while doing a horseback trekking through the forests of Fireland. And we had these typical traveler's talk, like, where do you come from, where do you go to? And Gunnar then told me that he was going to go to the Antarctic. I looked at him and maybe I thought he's going there for whale watching or cruising around with a boat. But Gunnar was on a mission. He was an athlete and he wanted to run through the Antarctic. He wanted to take part in a running competition through the coldest desert on earth. He looked at me and said, have you ever heard about racing the planet? They organize running races through four deserts, each with a distance of 250 kilometers. I looked at him and I had really no idea what he was talking about. I imagined Gunnar running through ice and snow, 250 kilometers through the coldest desert on earth. And I imagined him with frostbites on his face and frozen fingers. And even when I thought about running a distance of 250 kilometers and through ice and snow, it made me shiver. But the way how Gunnar talked to me fascinated me. And the wave of enthusiasm hit me suddenly. And I could feel an energy in me and the little tiny soft voice that was whispering to me, you can do this as well. I had no idea where this energy was coming from. Have you ever experienced something like that? That an idea hit you so much? The power of an idea is never to be underestimated. And I'm sure everyone's heart is beating and shining for something. But sometimes there must be a trigger from the outside. It doesn't matter what it is or who it is. It's more about that you get on fire. And when I heard about racing the planet for the first time, I was on fire. But it's more about that, that you need to feel it from the inside, that you feel the real inner motivation when you want to do something. And then you can start thinking big and you can grow with it. When we finished our horseback trekking, Gunnar gave me a piece of paper, a handwritten piece of paper, with only three words on it. Racing the planet. When I was back home, I researched the facts about this challenge. And you can run through only one desert in the Atacama in Chile, the driest desert on Earth, you can run through the Gobi Desert in China, the windiest desert on Earth. You can run through the hottest desert on Earth, the Sahara in Egypt. And you can run through the coldest desert on Earth, the Antarctic. There are about 160 competitors from all over the world. And each race has a distance with 250 kilometers divided into six stages. Is anyone around here who has ever run a half marathon or a marathon? Hands up. No. So, do you remember how it felt after running that marathon? And when you think about running on the next day also or a marathon, <laughs> no? So, racing the planet means that you run on Sunday a marathon, Monday a marathon, Tuesday a marathon, Wednesday a marathon, on Thursday, you run a double marathon. And on Saturday, you run the cool distance of only 10 kilometers to complete the 250 kilometers. You can run through only one desert. But I decided to run to all four deserts in one year. Maybe because I could not decide for only one desert 
or maybe because of my motto, when you do something, do it right and do it with 100%. So I started training and I had 10 months in order to get fit for that training. And maybe you think now that I have been a runner before. You are more or less wrong, because I only had run a marathon, but only because it was a present of one of my birthdays from my brother. So I was definitely not infected with that running virus before. I was going for a jogging during the weeks, but I had no big goal with these running things. So I went on, and fortunately, I had studied sports science, and I had the theoretical knowledge about training schedules. And I wrote my training schedule, and I was able to train up to 150 kilometers per week. My body tolerated this quite well. And you might know that I live in a little mountain village in Switzerland on high altitude. And we have six months at least of winter during the year. Well, these are not the best conditions for running and preparationing for, for a hot desert. So I had to be really creative. And then one day I took my stepper and went into a sauna. <laughs> and at least I trained there for 10 minutes only. It was really tough. But I can tell you that the real conditions in the hot deserts were even more extreme and brutal. The people around me reacted in the most different kind of ways when they heard about my project. Some of them were motivating me, some of them were really worried, and some just said that I was crazy and the project totally insane. I called my parents to tell them about my intention, and after I described the rough details about my adventure, my mom was at the end of the line, and whether to the question if someone is still there because there was no answer anymore, she said, oh, yes, that sounds interesting, and uh, how is the weather at your place, and how is the ski season going on? So there will always be people around you who don't like your idea or who are really worried about what you're doing. Listen to them. Be nice and friendly, but never ever let them ruin your idea. So despite all these positive and negative reactions, I went on with my preparation. And the idea to run for a charity came to my mind. Paulchen Esperanza the charity founded by a friend of mine, would be the ideal combination with my running ambitions. They support children in need in three different countries by helping and building up new schools, providing the school money, or taking care of orphans. So the people around me started to donate money, and that motivated me even more to go on with my project. And with just the simple thing of running through four deserts, I was able to create awareness for children in need. And that made me feel really happy. You might think I was doing these 1,000 kilometers through these four deserts with a team, with supporters, medicals, mental coaches, you might think that I was eating a nice dinner in the evening and a continental breakfast in the morning. Or you might think that I slept in a nice hotel room with hot showers and toilets. Well, Racing the Planet, the organization, they only provides a place in a tent and hot and cold drinking water. Anything else you have to carry in your backpack. So I put everything inside from the sleeping mat, from the sleeping bag, clothes, my toothbrush, toilet paper, and so on. And I was eating frozen dried meals in the evening and muesli in the morning. You put hot water in these boxes and then you have a nice pasta bolognese. I slept in a tent with 10 different people from all over the world. We had no hot showers but we had outdoor toilets. 
and I was totally alone with myself. When you run through a desert, there is no one who gives you any kind of support. It's just only you versus you. So what to do when a crisis comes? What to do when the sun burns on your face and on your head and you feel like a fried egg in a pan? What to do when the salty sweat runs over your face into your eyes and you start to cry? And when the backpack on your shoulders is so heavy that you can't resist the pain anymore? To sit down and wait in the desert? For what? For the next bus? Giving up is simply not an option. And when it got really tough, Gunnar appeared in front of me and reminded me on the uniqueness of my project. I saw the twinkle in his eyes and I was sure that I will make it. Crises come and crises go. This is a fact. And then the adventure started. I went to the Atacama Desert, to the first desert, and I was really, really nervous because I had no idea how it will be. I was a rookie. I was totally new. I ran 250 kilometers through the driest desert on Earth, and I finished as the first woman and 11th place overall. When I went to the Gobi Desert, I was even more nervous because I thought, Maybe I just won the first desert just by chance. So I wanted to improve if I would really have a talent or not. So I went to the start line of the windiest desert on earth. I went through wind from all, from the front, from the side, from the back. It was so windy there and so rocky, but really, really beautiful. And I crossed the finish line as the first woman again and fourth place overall. When I went to the Sahara Desert, I felt a little bit more confident, but I was still nervous, more or less because of the hot conditions there in, in the Sahara, where you have about 45 degrees during the day and you feel the heat everywhere on your body. So I was running from the start to the end and I was suffering a lot. But I finished as the first woman as well and fifth place overall. And then the last desert was there to run through the Antarctic. I can tell you, I was so excited because the idea came to my mind, what would be if I could win the last desert as well? Would it be possible that I can win all four in one year? But that was not my goal. I just wanted to participate in these races. I didn't want to win them all. So I went back to Ushuaia, where once I met Gunnar from Norway, to get on the boat, to go to the Antarctic, and to the start line, and I ran through the last desert, and I won it as well as the first woman. And third place <laughs> overall. I became the first woman ever to win all four deserts in one year. Racing the planet was a life-changing experience for me. And sometimes I ask myself, what would have been if I had never, ever met Gunnar from Norway? Now I know that it's always worth it to try something new, although you have no idea how it will be. You can grow with a project, but it must come from the inside. You really need to feel the inner power of an idea. And unless you don't try something, you don't know what you can achieve and what, for what you are capable for. So every challenge brings you further and enriches your life. Gunnar was my ripple effect. So go out and find your Gunnar effect. Thank you very much. <laughs>